Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and for taking the time to attend uh, today's webinar, Colombia and Emblematic Destination. My name is Anna Kamerar. I work with Emerging Destinations. We are a social marketing representation company in US and Canada. And we represent different hotels, cruises, DMCs, and tourism boards across Europe, Africa, and um, the Americas region. Before starting with our webinar, Colombia and Emblematic Destination, which will be presented by Guillermo Viloria from Colombian Journeys DMC. I would like to uh, give you a brief overview of our clients in the portfolio and give you a few housekeeping uh, notes to go over the platform. So as I was mentioning before, we are Emerging Destinations, a rep company. We have a big, diverse and adventure portfolio. As you can see on your screen now, uh, we represent different companies across Africa, Europe, and the Americas region. Uh, just focusing on the continent we are speaking about today, which is co Colombia, the Americas region. In that continent, we represent Colombian Journey's sister company, which is Chile Concept DMC, DMC um, a DMC with offices in Santiago, the capital city of Chile, as well as in Punta Arenas in Patagonia, and who can help you with any itinerary across Chile, featuring Atacama Desert, Easter Island, uh, Patagonia, the wine region, as well as some Antarctica cruises. So if you have any requests for Chile, please give uh, Chile Concept a try, either for FITs or groups, they are really uh, amazing. Another company that we have in the Americas portfolio is Enchanted Expeditions. Um, they are also a DMC with offices in Quito and in the Galapagos Islands, but they also uh, own a lodge, the Enchanted Galapagos Lodge, which is located in Santa Cruz Island. Only 10 rooms, they have availability for festive season, and in fact, they are offering an amazing uh, promo uh, of um, one night free um, after four nights paid. So just uh, drop me an email if you have clients interested in taking advantage of that. And they also own and operate three motor yacht cruises with capacity for 14 and 16 people, which are the Passion, the Beluga, and the Cachalote Explorer, sailing around the Galapagos Islands on six and eight days itineraries. La Coralina Island House is a boutique uh, luxury resort located in Bocas del Toro Archipelago in Panama. A beautiful, beautiful uh, property, especially I would suggest for either honeymooners, also for any yoga retreats, wellness programs. Uh, they have 23 rooms, eight villas. They are facing the Caribbean Sea, and it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, property and a perfect getaway uh, from your clients very close to the States. Uh, and last but not least, we also represent Las Torres Patagonia or Las Torres Reserve. Um, they uh, own and operate the beautiful hotel Las Torres Patagonia in the heart of Torres del Paine National Park, as well as the different camping sites, mountain hostels and camp campings along the uh, W uh, circuit in Torres del Paine National Park. So if you have any questions regarding any of those clients or any of the clients that we have in Africa and Europe portfolio, you can see my email address at the bottom of the screen now. Uh, please send me an email and I will be uh, more than happy to help you and your clients with any request. So before passing everything over to Guillermo Viloria, Managing Director of Colombian Journeys DMC, um, a few housekeeping notes to go over um, this webinar. All of you are mute. However, you will be able to ask Guillermo any questions at the end of his presentation. Please type those uh, on the control panel on your right. And I will be asking uh, Guillermo all of your questions at the end of his presentation. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so if you have to step away, uh, answer the phone or have a cup of coffee, please feel free to do that. 
uh, we will be sending you all uh, this recording as well as some um, collateral materials and sample itineraries from Colombian Journeys early next week. And we will be also uploading uh, this recording on our website, uh, emergingdestinations.com, as well as on our YouTube channel, uh, Emerging Destinations. Uh, if you are not following uh, us, I highly recommend you to subscribe on the YouTube channel and you will be able to watch any of the webinars that we are uh, conducting with our clients in the portfolio. They are sort of um, separated or assigned by continents, by, by regions, so it's quite easy to find them. So I think this is all on my side. So now it's the time um, to take a virtual tour to the beautiful country of Colombia presented by our client, Colombian Journeys GMC. Well, good morning, good afternoon for everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to talk about amazing country called Colombia. My name is Guillermo Villoria. I am the general manager uh, of uh, Colombian Journeys at DMC. We have been in Colombia operating since 2006. So we can say that we are almost 70 years um, operating Colombia. Um, I am the general manager and so I'm very happy to be here to talk about a country that right now is growing very fast and is trending around the world. So we are very happy about it. And I'm sure that all your clients are asking about Colombia. Today, the idea is to explain you about where is Colombia, uh, about, all, um, about the country, the hotels, but we will focus in the classic destination. Colombia is a huge country. There's a lot of things to see and every year is growing, so every year there is new destination, new product. But today we want to focus in this classic uh, places of Colombia like Bogotá, uh, Coffee Region, uh, Medellín and Cartagena. So the first things I want to say is, well, Colombia is located in the north of South America. And so we are the only country in South America that has Pacific Ocean and Caribbean Sea. So, of course, for us as a country, it's fantastic to have access to those part of the continent. And is of course, it's a huge benefit, not only in terms of economical, also in tourism, because we can enjoy and there is a big difference between the Caribbean and the Pacific side in terms of culture, gastronomy. Uh, our neighbors are Panama, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, and Brazil. In, terminal, in, term, in terms of general information, uh, the population of Colombia is 50 million people, so we have a lot of people. Uh, it's a very huge country, uh, our official language is Spanish, and our currency is pesos colombiano. And in terms of size of the country, you can imagine that if you put together Spain and France, it's the size of Colombia. As you can see, it's huge. We are 1,142 kilometers uh, squares, and so uh, that, of course, makes you know that to move in the country sometimes is very hard because from the north to the south, there is a huge distance. But in general, all the tourism areas are located in the north, so the uh, distance are not so big. In terms of weather, I, I always like to talk about this because people think that because we are close to the equator and we have Caribbean and Pacific side, uh, we are a warm country. And it's not like that. Why? Because the Andes change, which is the biggest mountain of South America, finishing Colombia. The three change, finishing Colombia, the western, the central, and the eastern one. So some of the most important points of Colombia are located in this area. For example, Bogota, we are located at 2,600 meters over the sea level. So that means that we are in the middle of the mountain, 
and of course our weather is completely different. I am located right now in Bogota. So the weather is completely different than the Caribbean side. So always it's important to talk about this to your clients because um, when they move around the country, they will find different weathers, different um, rainy seasons and different temperatures. So as you can see in the chain in the Andes, you see the blue, the green colors, and then in the bottom, in the south, in the north, or in the Pacific side, is more red. So that means it's hotter than in the Andes area. So of course, always it's good to bring a raincoat, uh, a sweater, because in Bogota, sometimes you can feel uh, cold during the day. Um, and the, for example, Medellin too, sometimes it's, it's, it's cold. Uh, but then when you move to the, to the north or to the Pacific side, uh, you will change your clothes to shorts, sandals, and to enjoy the nice weather and warm. In terms of, of um, well, Colombia right now, it's, it's a mega diverse country. It's the second one in the world uh, after Brazil. Um, and why is that? Well, the first thing is that right now we are this year for third time, Colombia is the country has more birds than any other country in the world. We have 1,954 birds and 82 are endemic. So today we are the first country in birds. We are the first country in orchids. We have more than 4,000 orchids. And we are the first country in fruit biodiversity. We have more than 433 native species of fruit, fruit trees. So every day of the year, you can try a different fruit. So of course, that's fantastic. Uh, when you are traveling in Colombia, trying all the different variety of fruits that we have. We are the second country in diverse of plants, amphibians, fish, and butterflies. Third country in diverse of reptiles and palms. And the third country in diversity of mammals. So as you can see, of course, this is a fantastic thing that we are a mega diverse country because you can see different things around the country, different kind of wildlife. Uh, and our biodiversity is so variety that, of course, makes us, you know, a fantastic country. Then in terms of multicultural country, 86% is white and mestizos. Uh, we have 10% of Afro-descendant. And of course, that's a big thing for us because we have a lot of traditions, gastronomy, dance, music that come from uh, Afro-descendant uh, heritage. And that, of course, you know, makes the country also very interesting to see these um, expressions in different parts of the country. And finally, we have almost 5% of indigenous in different areas of the country. We have indigenous communities in Santa Marta and Sierra Nevada. We have indigenous communities in the south of Colombia, close to Equator. Um, in Popayán, for example, with Silvia Market, we have in the Amazons, uh, we have in the plains of Colombia. So in different parts of the country, we can see, or your clients can see, indigenous community get together with them and understand their traditions, their way of life, which are very interesting. We have 68 native languages, more than 102 indigenous community, 19 UNESCO heritage, and from those 19 UNESCO heritage, we have a night culture and natural and intangible 10. And finally, I always say this is like the cherry of the cake. We have more than 1,000 musical rhythms. So the music will go with you in every part of the country. The music changes depending on which area you are. Because, for example, in the Caribbean, we have the music is completely different than Bogota. But uh, the, the mix of music that we have in the country is amazing. You will see, you know, in every part you go, you will hear and enjoy the music mixed with dance and traditions. In terms of air connectivity with the US, I think today uh, the best connectivity we have is with, with the United States of America, which is uh, fantastic. So that's, fun, that's really good for you, of course, because we have direct flights from all the most important uh, cities in the US, like Atlanta. We have direct flights that started this year to Boston. We have to Dallas, daily flights to Fort Lauderdale, Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, Newark, New York, Orlando, and Washington. And all those direct flights connect very easy because we have a really good domestic connection with the local airlines to the most important uh, cities like Armenia in the Coffee region, Barranquilla in the, in the Caribbean, Bogota, of course, the, the capital, Bucaramanga, Cali, Cartagena, Medellin, Pereira, and San Andres. So we can say that we have 380 frequencies 
and more than 53,000 seats available on a weekly basis. So that means that, of course, you have a lot of options to send your client for different parts of the U.S. to Colombia. In terms of uh, how many flights or frequencies we have weekly to different parts of the U.S., for example, Miami, we um, American Airlines, Aviaca, and Latam, and um, we have uh, 131 uh, weekly frequencies from from other there we have the spirit jet blue and avianca 58 weekly new york avianca jet blue and delta 45 orlando spirit Air and avianca 23 for houston we have 14 frequencies um, weekly with united airlines to los angeles avianca daily atlanta delta daily washington avianca daily new york united with united airlines daily dallas american Air daily and boston Avianca, we have five right now. So as you can see, a lot of connections for your clients. So it's really easy to come to Colombia and connect to domestic flights. Now we're going to get deep into Colombia in the classic places. You can see all the red points, which is the most important destination places of Colombia. Uh, so there's a lot of things to do. So always you have to be very carefully in terms of um, where your clients want to go because they can spend more than one month visiting everything and i know that of course you know depending on the budget the time of the client you have to focus on the most important thing so the first time a client is coming to colombia we always recommend first start in bogota which is the capital and always i i like to say you know like colombia is like a book and the introduction of that book is bogota because bogota is the capital 90 percent of the flights arrive here and it's a mix of the traditions and the food, the culture of Colombia, because during the last 100 years, a lot of people moved from their cities to Bogota. So here you can find people from different parts of the country that brings the tradition, the gastronomy, the music. So Bogota is like the introduction. And of course, you can find the most important uh, museums uh, are located in Bogota. And of course, you finish in Cartagena, which is the most well-known city in the world everybody knows cartagena everybody wants to know there it's amazing place on the caribbean in the world of cartagena is a world heritage and inside that world happens a lot of amazing things in the magic that you know to walk in their uh, in the streets uh, with the amazing architecture colonial architecture you boutique hotels restaurants bar and all the performance that are happening in the street, it's amazing. So always we recommend, of course, that's on our opinion, and we think it's, 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 it's good to start in Bogota, finish in Cartagena. And then in the middle, you start including different things depending on the, what your clients are looking for, and the budget they have, and how much time, of course, they have to spend in their vacations. And depending on that, you can start including different things. Today, we will focus in two places that right now are the trendy places after Bogota and Cartagena, the coffee region. And of course, it's, it's, it of course is a, is a world heritage. Um, the, the landscape and the views of, of, of the coffee region are world heritage, but also, um, you know, that, well, coffee, Colombian coffee is well known around the world. So this is one of the most important places to go and see the plantation, how they cultivate to meet the farmers to understand why the coffee is so important, etc. And then the last destination that started to be very famous in the last five years is Medellin. Uh, it's one of my favorite cities in, in, in Colombia. Uh, so, well, we're going now to focus uh, in these, these four destinations and we are going to start in Bogota. Like I said before, arrival city, capital city, more than 8 million people. And the points of interest is, well, of course, Gold Museum, one of the best gold museums in Latin America, the Santuario of Montserrat, Botero Museum, the Colonial Centers La Candela, which is located in downtown, the nightlife and gastronomy is fantastic, and the gastronomy in Bogota is growing very fast. Guatabiti, which is a very important lagoon that is part of the Leyenda del Dolado, or the Gold Legend, and finally, Zipaquirá, where is located the South Cathedral. The temperature of Bogota is uh, average Celsius 14 um, all year round, and the rain season is between April to June, and then September, October, and November. This is some pictures of um, Bogota. 
very colonial style from the Spanish period. Um, this is the cathedral in the main square, the gold museum, which has more than 50,000 amazing gold pieces from the pre-Columbian period. So it's fantastic to go here. I think it's something that is a must in Colombia you have to do. The Botero Museum, also very important, a painter and sculpture from Colombia. The, actually, he's from Medellin, but the best museum of Botero is located in Bogota. Monserrate, which is a, a mountain, and the, you can go by funicular or cable car and to see the size of Bogota because the view there is amazing, whether it's clear without clouds. And it's incredible to see the size of Bogota, so you can understand why Bogota is so important and it's a big, big city. Usaquén, which is a fantastic place to go on Sundays because the flea market and to see handcrafts. Then Sipaquirá, which is located in the north, to see the South Cathedral. There's only two in the world. One is located in Poland and the other one is in Bogota. It's a South Cathedral that was constructed inside in a salt mine. Uh, and finally, well, Guatavita Lagoon, which is very important. Uh, one of the main pieces of the Gold Museum, there is a little boat that represents the ceremony that the Indonesian community did in the past. And that ceremony was in this uh, lagoon. And that's why it's so important for us. Of course, to go to the local market, Palo Quemao, to see all the different fruits. Salsa tour, salsa in Colombia is very famous. And so also it's nice to do salsa tours. In terms of Bogota hotels, there is a lot of offers. It's a big city, very corporate city. And so of course, uh, to find different kind of hotel uh, with different budgets, it's very easy. But I will focus on the most important one, Four Season Casa Medina, which is a house of 1940 um, and colonial style, but with the comfort of Four Season. Four Season Bogota, which is completely new, also very well located. Sofitel, fantastic lake, is very cozy. Uh, Victoria Regia, also well, very well located. Then we have the BOG, which is a um, design. A chic hotel, also really nice a place to stay. Um, it's very trendy. Um, then we have Casa Legado, which is a fantastic place because it's the only boutique hotel we have right now in Bogota. Also well located. Uh, it's kind of like a, your own house. So if you go to the breakfast, you can order whatever you want because they always want to 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 help you with whatever you want. So it's a fantastic place, luxury hotel. So in general, there's a lot of a lot of hotels in Bogota. Now we are going to Medellin. Medellin, it's became very famous, of course. For one of the reasons is because there was a very famous TV show in Netflix called Narcos. And so people start to be curious to go to Medellin, and then when they find out it's a fantastic place, it's the Fernando Botero's hometown, famous for the flower festival that happens every year in August. Also, it's really easy to connect with the triangle, with the coffee region. The gastronomy is fantastic. It's called the spring forever. The weather is incredible. There's a lot of things to do. And in 2013, it was named like the most innovative city in the world uh, because of the transportation system. It's the only one with subway in Colombia. And I think so. it's a fantastic place to go. Nice hotels, really good gastronomy, nice weather. The people is fantastic. So I think so it's a must uh, if you can't have the, enough time to uh, spend two nights, three days average. The, cell, well, the, the weather is between 19, 20, 21 uh, Celsius uh, average. Um, the rainy season is more or less the same thing than Bogota. Rains more than in Bogota, however, the weather is so nice that you know sometimes, and, and it's a small shower, so it's not so bad. So um, it's fantastic. I love the temperature and, and, and the place. Then, well, the main square of Medellin is very important because Botero donates more than 20 sculptures. So it's easy and it's free and it's fantastic to go to the main square of Medellin to see these 20 sculptures. Like I said before, the transportation system is fantastic. It's well connected. To move around is really, really easy. They have subway, cable cars to the favela, escalators to the favela. They have funiculars. They have um, 
tra the transportation, the buses. So it's really easy to, to go every part of, of, of Medellin because of the transportation system. Uh, this is the escalator to the favelas. Favelas is, of course, one of the most important or the trendy tours right now to go to the favelas and see, you know, the life of the people, to meet people, to see the, all the street performance, the graffitis. This is a subway. And this is very interesting to, to see um, and also to understand that for Medellin, people is very important because it's the only city with a subway. So they're very proud about it. Bogota, which is the capital of Colombia, uh, there is no subway. In Medellin, they have subway. So um, it's really good to see it's really clean, organized. The people, you know, they, 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 they um, I mean, the, 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 the civic, or how can you say, the well, they, they, uh, very educated um, during they are in the subway. You know, for them, it's so important that, uh, they take care very well the subway. They they very organized. Uh, so it's it's very interesting activity to 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 go in the subway. Santa Elena, which is the flower area, um, very important. Like I said before, there is a flower festival every year in August. Uh, and if you don't go at that time, you can go to Santa Elena to see all the uh, flower farms. And, and to have an experience with one of the farmers to explain the different kind of flowers they have. And it's one of the places in Colombia that export more flowers uh, in the world. So it's it's fantastic place. And to also understand the culture behind the farmers. Then we have all uh, the flower fair that happen every year in August, the, in the first two weeks of, of, of August. Um, and there is a lot of things to do close to Medellin. One is to go to El Peñol in Guatapé. El Peñol is this big rock. Uh, that you can climb to the top is more than 750 stairs um, and go to Watape, which is a little town that is very famous for the Zócalo. The Zócalo is this, this uh, beautiful designs that each house has and it's fantastic to see it and to see the different kind of decorations. Santa Fe Antioquia, which is a old, is a, is a um, world heritage uh, town and also Jardín. And sometimes I say, uh, that you know, Medellin is, is is a place today that you can spend two nights there. But then there's a lot of things to do around because beautiful uh, small towns, there is very close by three hours by car. So and you there's every year there's more hotels in these little towns. So it's fantastic to do uh, uh, tours or extensions to all these places around Medellin. <clears throat> in terms of hotels, um, there is a lot of options too. It's a big city. Right now, the most famous are El Cielo. Uh, the owner is a very famous chef. By the way, he has uh, a, um, two or three branches in US of the restaurant El Cielo. One is located in Miami, the other one is in Washington. And the Washington uh, um, restaurant has one Michelin star. So he constructed this hotel before the pandemic, it's called El Cielo, and also the restaurant is in, in one of the areas of the hotel. Um, then we have Hotel Partem, very classic place. Patio El Mundo, which is a boutique hotel. The owner is French, it's a fantastic place. I love the decoration, the taste, the floors of the rooms, the decoration of the bathroom is amazing. Marriott, and we have the Click Clack, it's a design hotel. Really nice too, Hotel 23 Medellin, also nice hotel. And then <clears throat> now we continue to the coffee region. In general, what we always recommend is to start in Bogota, go to coffee region for two nights and then finish in Medellin before go, you go to this, the north of Colombia. Because coffee region in Medellin is, is very close. So by airplane is only 45 minutes. And, and today to get there by car is a little bit hard because they are constructing the new highway. So today can take between six to 10 hours. So we always recommend to go by car. This is the heart of Colombia. Uh, is um, the coffee region is is is, mm, is a region that combines three important cities: uh, Manizales in the north, Pereira in the middle, and Armenia in the south. Uh, one of the interesting things about this place is the colorful village. You will see the pictures. is fantastic. The architecture of the coffee region. The most important place to go is the Valle Cocora. Uh, where you can see the Wex Farms, what is one of the highest farms of the world, and of course the coffee farms. 
is fantastic to go. There's different kind of coffee farms from the most sophisticated from the, um, um, and, and to the most folkloric or authentic coffee farms. So in terms of uh, temperature is more or less the same thing that Medellin and also the rain and fall is the same uh, seasons like Medellin because they are located close to each other. This is some of the landscape you will see during your trips. You see the little houses, the, the, that's the, the colorful village I mentioned before, you know, the Y, and you will see more pictures. This is the farmers. This is the Cocora Valley, and this is the Wax Farms, the highest farms of the world. And this is the color of the balconies, the architecture, you know, the, 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 all the houses are white, uh, but the doors, the balconies are in different color, and that's very nice to see. This is Finlandia, another important town. And in terms of activities, you can do a lot of things here, like coffee triangle, be watching, coffee triangles, pihau gardens, etc., etc. There's a lot of things to do in this area. Um, fruity tasting in Sasawa, wax ponds empire, which is a private activity we have, traditional food, etc. In terms of hotel, also there is nice hotels uh, it's not like a big offer today but there is really nice boutique hotels like hacienda san jose we have sasawa which is really nice place too we have bambusa very famous right now because of encanto movie from disney and uh, the disney team was here and the house of the the movie was inspired from this uh, bambusa hotel we have casa Rivera cacao which is very famous for the coffee uh, uh, chocolate and, and chocolate. San Carlos Lodge, Hacienda Santa Clara, Bio Habitat is a boutique hotel. And El Nido Condor is a glamping that is located in the north of the coffee region where you can see the condor and it's really nice place to stay. Hacienda Santa Rosana, which is a very traditional place, also nice. Um, it's really good hotel and there is coffee plantations around so you can go and see the farmers and Las Nubes which is a private house for a couple of honeymooners. In terms of, uh, so well, now after we, we saw Bogota, a coffee region in Medellin, we finished in Cartagena and of course extension to Rosario Island. Cartagena is fantastic place. Uh, it, of course, the most known destination in the world uh, is very important for the for the history of South America. And here you can find the largest fortification, and the nightlife is fantastic. The restaurant every year there is more and more and more restaurants with different kind of gastronomy, Colombian gastronomy, with international, uh, and of course, you know, to be inside um, the wall city is one of the best experiences, and it's free. The temperature is well, Caribbean style, Celsius between 24, but can get to 20, 34, 35. And the rainy season is between July and October. And it's like the Caribbean. So it's, it's similar to all the part of the Caribbean region. So it's the same uh, rainfalls and the temperature will uh, average 24 Celsius. This is Cartagena. Fantastic place. I love to walk in, in there in the uh, street is amazing the balconies the weather to see the performance of different kind of people doing the streets the bars after five six o'clock in the night is amazing because it's less warm and and and, and it's amazing experience the streets of cartagena i love it then the largest fortification which is the san felipe fort of course most of the population is Afro-descendant, so there is a lot of black people in the street uh, with their their different uh, customs or or, or tradition um, um, clothes. Like for example, this lady who is from Palenque, which is one of the most important um, settlement of a slave uh, and one of the best, one of the um, first free uh, towns of Latin America. Uh, so, of course, you know, the traditions, the food is fantastic from Palenque and the churches. And this is the modern side of Cartagena, Getsemani, which is becoming a really important place to visit. Uh, graffiti tours, street food tours, busy local market. We have wrong coffee tasting, catamaran with picnic, cooking La Boquilla. So we have a lot of activities to do in Cartagena in terms of hotel. We have Sofitel Santa Clara, which is one of the best ones, Charleston Santa Teresa, 
uh, also one of the most important places, one of the most important hotels, Casa San Agustin, a boutique hotel is fantastic, Quadrifolio, boutique hotel too, Bastion, Ananda, also a really good option, uh, Capellan, which is located in Getsemaní, Casa Pestagua, uh, it's a new hotel, uh, it's not a new, but it was renovated, all the hotel completely, and now Casa San Agustin is operating this uh, uh, boutique hotel, um, we have Santa Catalina Hotel, and then outside the wall city, uh, there is two important places that we always, of course, you know, recommend to stay inside the wall city because that's experience. But when there is a like a big group or there is no availability, the only options uh, will be outside the wall city. One area is called Boca Grande, which is the most traditional area of Cartagena. Um, and there you can find the higher Regency, Capilla del Mar, it's a local change also Hotel Caribe, Intercontinental. And then you go to the other part of Cartagena um, where you can find also big hotels like America's Torres del Mar, Las Americas, Calle de Playa, Green Caribana. But to be honest, we always recommend to stay inside the wall city uh, when you have a small groups or just FITs because finally is the, is the, is the main activity uh, and the most um, a fantastic experience to be inside. And finally, there is a couple islands uh, or peninsula in front of Cartagena. One is called Islas del Rosario and the other one is Barú, where you can find different kinds of uh, hotels for spend a full day tour or to overnight, to stay there. So in terms of full day, we have Aguasú, Bendita Beach, Mahawa and Isabela which is our places uh, you can spend the day, go by boat. Depends of the island, the, the, the time or the duration of the journey can be between 45 to one hour and a half. You spend the day there, have a lunch and come back to Cartagena. And we have this one also called McKinney Luxury Beach Club. And finally, we have today, the best options to stay there is one, Sofitel Baru Casablanca. And the other one, uh, it's, Las Islas Hotel, uh, which is leading of the uh, leading hotel of the world, is 52 bungalows are located um, in Baru Peninsula, and all these bungalows you have the crown bungalows or uh, the three bungalows that you can see there in the picture. Then we have um, San Pedro Maha, which is a small hotel boutique, also located in Rosero Island, and then we have I oh, forgot to Blue Apple Beach, which is located in Tierra Bomba. Aguasú Beach is a private house, but they have like six rooms that you can stay there. Royal de Cameron, which is a massive hotel, all inclusive. And finally, the 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 the, the Punta Far Hotel, which is located in the in the farthest island, San Bernardo Island, it's approximately like two hours by boat. A really nice place to stay. Casaletti Baru, which is a private house, and that will be all about the most important destination. So finally, in resume, uh, we recommend to stay two nights in Bogota, two nights in Coffee Region, two nights in Medellin, and two nights, uh, three nights in Cartagena. So that's itinerary of nine nights, 10 days. And then if your clients want to stay more time, they can do an extension to Rosario Island to stay approximately two or three nights in one of the, those hotels that I explained before. Well, I think that's it. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Um, my name is Guillermo, like I said at the beginning. Um, so anything you may need in the future, just contact us. Um, and well, thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day. Awesome, that was a great presentation. Thank you so much for that, Guillermo. Um, let me start asking you some questions that are coming in uh, on the control panel. Uh, we have here in, uh, in the platform, well, everybody is liking your presentation, beautiful hotel options. Can you please uh, say it again? How many days would you recommend if someone has seven to 10 days maximum? What, what would be sort of the ideal uh, combination and, and how many days per, per city or region? Hi, how are you? It's a pleasure. 
and I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. And well, regarding your question, Anna, I think you know the, the more or less that's what we think. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, you can increase or decrease the, the, the number of nights depending on the budget and the time of the client. But in general, we think that two nights is enough in Bogota, then two nights in Coffee Region, two nights in Medellin, and three nights in Cartagena. So that's nine, nine nights and 10 days. And I think with, with that time, uh, you can uh, see the highlights of each city and cover the most important things. Of course, there's always a lot of things to do. Colombia is growing very fast. There is more and more things to do. Extension from Bogota, go to visit other places uh, outside Medellin. Um, and of course, well, in Cartagena, there is more activities every day. But in general, I think with that uh, um, quantity of night and day is enough to cover the most important thing when you're coming for Colombia for the first time. And then, of course, you have the extensions. In general, clients like to finish their trip, you know, in a place to relax uh, next to the beach and in a nice infrastructure. So we always recommend to stay in the Rosario Island. There is a couple of that I mentioned in the presentation. Or you can go to Santa Marta, which is three hours uh, more or less by car. And um, there you can stay in one of the highlights of these areas to visit the Tyrone National Park to see the beaches or the indigenous community. So that's in general what we recommend. Of course, there is more to see in Colombia, uh, but the, this presentation, the goal was to show you, you know, the highlights of Colombia. But today you have all the south of Colombia, like the Amazon, the plains, uh, the Pacific side where you can see the wells, the islands in the Caribbean that are in front of Nicaragua, they are part of Colombia. Um, so also fantastic place to be. See, today we have more product and Providence is, all, is already to 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 open to clients again because they have a hurricane long time ago who destroyed ninety percent of the island and now finally they are starting to open uh, with local uh, with the locals and with local accommodation style so that's in general what we recommend. Okay, thank you. Then we have another question uh, from Chris. Do you have itinerary suggestions or sample itineraries uh, already prepared either on your website or that we can share on the follow-up email with uh, with all the attendees? Do you have something already, like some ideas? Yes, we do. And in our web page, you can go and find a different kind of itineraries. Also, I, I can send you on a or brochure where you can find mm -hmm. Two chapters in the last part of the of the catalog. One is uh, the like six or seven, I don't remember, classic itineraries. Um, okay. Like for example, Cari uh, Colombia by sea, classic Colombia, uh, and then in the last part you find the trekking uh, itineraries also that we recommend. Also, we have Panama Journey, so if we can combine Colombia with Panama, that's another really nice itinerary. So so yes, in our web page you can find it or uh, in our catalog, which I'm going to send you, so you can share with all the uh, clients. Awesome, awesome. And of course, those are ideas, but you tailor made everything. So yeah. from there, yeah, yeah, we do. We do. We always try to, you know, to create a, a tailor itinerary, tailor made itinerary for our clients, depending on their philosophy, the age of the clients, what kind of activity they're looking for, if it's focused in nature or they want to focus in classic or gastronomy or something very, you know, for example, we had one client one time who came from Australia. She was a, she's a designer and she came to under, to learn and understand how the uh, indigenous community uh, with, you know, the, all their textiles and clothes, etc. So we do everything tailor-made, but of course we have some, you know, example it, you know, that you can use in, in, in case you need something fast to talk with a client and to explain, you know, about, how to sell Colombia. Awesome. And do you do both FITs and groups, right? Yeah, 50% of our business is, is, is FITs for one to 10. And we have also uh, the other 50% is group, small groups between 10 to 20. Uh, and, and like you said, everything is tailor made. So, so yes, of course, we do both business. Okay. Do you require uh, any uh, minimum to spend? No, no minimum. You mean a minimum budget, for example? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we we don't we don't request a minimum budget. Uh, so it's okay. you know we always try to help a client in in their needs. So if they want yeah. to create a small itinerary for somebody who wants to spend just a couple of days in Cartagena, we can do it. Of course, we are very flexible, open 
you know, was, you know, we like to, to try to help our clients in whatever they want. Okay, but usually you work with uh, mostly with four and five star hotels, right? You don't like to work with uh, three star hotels just to make sure that they have a, a, a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, in okay. general, we, we, we work with four and five stars because um, even that, you know, we have a standard, or I don't know how you call it, process or procedure that, you know, they, or each each hotel has a star according to the regulation of Colombia. Mm -hmm. There are some hotels that we don't think they, 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 they fix to the stars they have according to the regulation of the country. So that's why maybe uh, four stars, sometimes three stars, that uh, according to our opinion or experience is two stars or less. So we first we we decide how, you know how many stars uh, the hotel has, and then depending on that we will offer to our client. And we focus in general in four and five star because we think we have to be very careful with the quality and the experience of the client. And we think that in Colombia four and five stars are the um, correct hotels for the kind of clients we work. Okay, and you also have some sort of private villas, right? Especially in Cartagena and in that area for either groups or, or multi-gen trips. Yes, yes, we do. We have an um, a offer of different kind of uh, houses in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And of course, in general, uh, the destinations that are more famous for this kind of properties is Cartagena, but also Medellin and Bogota, Coffee Region and other areas of Colombia is growing this kind of business. So we have uh, some options, uh, but of course, these houses we need to prepare everything in advance uh, because they don't have like breakfast included. So we have to, you know, we have to organize the staff, uh, the menus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The logistic is different than the hotel, mm -hmm. but we we do it, we do it, and 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 actually in October we have a client who's coming from Scandinavia who's going to spend uh, one month here. He's staying 15 days in Medellin in a house and 15 days in Cartagena, and we are in charge of everything, uh, the logistics, the transfer, the food, the staff, the the cooking or chef, etc. Nice. Uh, we have another question. Is it possible to purchase tickets uh, to the Gold Museum in advance? Yes, you can do it in advance. Okay, and they can do that through you, right? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. We we, yeah. we organize everything, you know, tickets, okay. hotels, okay. transfers, guy. If you want a reservation in a restaurant, we can do it for you. So that, that's our job as a DMC, you know, to organize anything that the clients need to, to do when they are in Colombia. Okay, thank you. And do you issue also the domestic flights between cities or is yes. this something that the travel uh, advisor needs to, to do by themselves? No, by I themselves? mean, we, we have a, a travel agency partner who help us with the issue of the tickets because okay. we, we are not IATA. Uh, but mm -hmm. in general, yes, when clients request uh, the domestic flights, we do it. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. our business, but it's part of our services. So also international okay. flights, but in general, clients come with the international flight, but we help them with the domestic flights. And sometimes in some destinations, you need to use local uh, or regional airlines that sometimes it's very hard to find them in the GDS or, or go to the web pages. So we also help clients with that because it's easier. And in general, we think it's better to have, you know, it's better that we issue the ticket because we can control, we have the relationship with the airlines and we can do the check-ins to clients when they are in Colombia because it's part of our service. And when we have the control of the reservation, it's better and easier for us than if, you, if the client do it. But it's up to the client, to be honest. I mean, it's something that they will want to, you know, to, to, um, to do it. Uh, it depends on the client. Okay. As for for rates, do do you work with a net or commissionable rates, or can the travel advisor choose whatever they prefer to? All our, all our rates, tariff, and quotations are net rates. Sometimes okay. with some hotels, and depending on the seasons, uh, they give us you know commission. And what we do is to share the commission fifty percent with the clients. Uh, but that's a very strange case during the year. In general, everything is net rate. Okay, so they can do their markup. Yep, they can markup. You know, it's, it's up to any uh, to the client. Uh, so yes. Okay, 
Then we have another question coming from Susan. She has some clients interested in going to Colombia in November, and they are they are asking about the I never heard about that. Wax palms. Uh, well, the wax palms so is in the Valle del Cocori, the coffee region, which I talked in the presentation, is one of the highest palms of the world. It's, a, it's the highlight of the coffee region. Even the coffee, of course, is like the main thing about this destination, but wax palms became like the most important uh, activity because to see the wax palms are beautiful, they one of the highest of the world, and it's a national park. So, yes, I mean, uh, we, we, the, if the client wants to see the wax palms, they have to go to the coffee region. Okay, and how accessible is this area? Really easy. To be honest, right now it's very crowded. It's, it's the top number one destination in the coffee region, so we have to be very carefully with the days of the week and the season. Uh, so we always recommend to go between Monday and um, Friday, uh, or if it's long weekend, we have to be, you know, we have to be very uh, honest with the client and tell them that it's going to be a lot of people because it's, it's a you know the top destination of the coffee region and and, and how this tour works is the, the fir first you go to Salento which is the most famous town in coffee region and from there you can go by car or wheelies the these small jeeps from the second mm -hmm. world war uh, to go to the wax palms area to see the palms and also you can have a lunch there uh, and you can do different activities you can do a horse riding or you can do a small trekking to see the west Palm, or just see it from uh, the main points um, and take pictures also we have another areas um, that are fantastic is not so famous and you can see the wax palms but sometimes it takes more time or, or the road is unpaved and you have to go four by four but for an amazing and, and wow experience I will suggest uh, to recommend the clients to go to see the wax palms in these areas one is called La Carbonera the other one is is close to um, a little town called um, oh, I forgot right now um, Pihau, Pihau, which is which is called uh, one of the uh, slowest town of, of Colombia. Uh, mm -hmm. So also there you can see wax palms and you can avoid all the crowd areas like uh, uh, the Valle del Cocora. But um, three places are fantastic, so it depends of, of what the client is looking for. Okay, another question coming from Maria. When is the whale watching season and in which uh, region or area of Colombia? In general, in all the Pacific area, uh, you can see whales between July and October. The highest point uh, or the highest probability to see 90% of, of the time you are there in, uh, and to see whales is in August. But in general, between July and October is good time. However, the Pacific size of Colombia is huge, so we always recommend to go to the top places like Nuki and Bahia Solano. To get there, you have to take an airplane from Medellin. So, in general, what we do is to combine Medellin with the Pacific side, with Nuki or Bahia Solano. Both places are more or less the same. Uh, Bahia Solano is more developed, and you can find uh, bigger hotels. Nuki is more, um, let's say, more rustic but also beautiful. These areas, uh, um, the population is uh, Afro-descendant, so that's the other amazing things to, to, to go there, to see there is, you know, to all the heritage uh, from Africa, like traditions, food, uh, dance, uh, music, etc., combined with the wells. So, but both places are fantastic. Then you have when I'm in the South, Tumaco, Wapi, other areas of the Pacific side that you can go, but they are more rustic and basic compared to Nuki, Bahia Solano, because these two places are more developed than the rest of the Pacific side. Okay. And now that you are mentioning, I remember that a couple of months ago we conducted another webinar with Carolina from your team, and she was speaking about Nuki and Bahia Solano. So if any of the attendees are interested in, in that uh, areas, you can uh, take a look at that webinar either on our YouTube channel or on our webinar library on Emerging Destinations website. And what I will be doing also when doing uh, when working on, on the email blast and the follow-up email, I will add on that email not only this recording, but I will add a link 
to that webinar as well. So between the two uh, webinars, you will have a sort of a, an amazing overview of Colombia uh, in, in, in general, and not just those uh, four uh, important cities that we were uh, speaking today. Um, so I will, I need to remember to, to do that. Um, just to make sure regarding payments, you have a bank account in US, right? Yes, we do. We have a bank account in US and okay. also in Switzerland, so no problem. I mean, we have okay. a couple options. Also, we have PayPal too. The only thing mm -hmm. is that you have to pay a commission and, and it's PayPal commission, but okay. also you can pay by credit card too, but pay you have a commission too, but it's not for, for us, it's for the bank. So I think the best way will be a wire to our uh, US bank. Yeah, I think it's sort of the the, the cheapest way uh, because credit yeah. card. Yes, of course, there are credit card fees. It all depends uh, if I'm not wrong, because I was checking the other day for another client. It depends on the credit card itself. So it runs from three to four percent, if I'm not wrong, on the total. Yep. Yeah. OK, then. Um, OK, Gian is uh, he's running a small group tours and he's interested in in ordering brochures with sample itineraries, Gian, uh, as I mentioned before, before I will be including in the follow-up email um, digital material and some uh, sample itineraries. And um, also, you can uh, write it down. My email address is at the bottom of, of the screen. Uh, just feel free to send me uh, any email, any request. And the last question I have for you, uh, unless someone is typing something. Uh, now um are you still working with the bookings for festive season is there availability in uh, for festive season in in the main sort of cities of of colombia so for december which is uh, the next high season uh, mm -hmm. is well it's, get, it's getting every day uh, less and less availability however we always try to find you know availability and the different options we have in 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 cartagena for example which is one of the most complicated places during uh, christmas time so but in general yes right now the the availability it is is limited but we always try to find in in the options we have so there's always you know a space but sometimes you have to you have to be patient because our FITs agents and, and, and groups department take sometimes uh, um, takes things a while uh, to to find availability because we have to call each hotel to ask if they cancel they have a cancellation if they have a space and if they don't have we go to the next hotel so it takes a little bit of time but today we still have availability for those dates. Okay, awesome. So if you have any client interested in in going anywhere for festive season and still asking you uh please uh, give colombian journeys a try colombia is an amazing destination i was there on 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 my personal vacation long time ago i was still at at school so and now i'm gray hair so that was long time ago but i have amazing memories we did bogota we did the gold museum we went to Sipaquira, to Valle de Leyva, we did the South uh, Cathedral, we went to Cartagena, and I highly recommend, I agree with you, that you need to stay in any hotel within the World City. Uh, it's uh, an amazing experience. And at that time, we did uh, day tours to Rosario Islands. So, yes, for our travel advisors connected today, uh, it's definitely a, a perfect uh, idea to to recommend your clients to to celebrate festive season this year in Colombia. So uh, hurry up, send uh, to us all your booking requests, and Colombian journeys will make the magic, um, and and your clients will be more than happy uh, celebrating in Colombia. So I think. Oh, okay. Most important uh, questions from travel advisors and the last one, so I don't take too much time from, from everybody's uh, time today. Uh, are you offering any kind of discounts if travel advisors are interested in travel? Yes, Or of how do you handle that? I think it depends yes, on the season, right? Yes, we love, we love to have, you know, uh, our clients here. I think it's the best way to promote the country. And when they come back, uh, they, you know, 
come back with a huge uh, and, and, and amazing experience. So, and, and I've, I'm sure that helps a lot to, to sell, you know, to, to their clients. So we are open always to have all, um, travel agencies. So just send us a, a quotation. We try to find, you know, the, the best discount we have with suppliers. And then of course we reduce our margin in order to give, you know, the client, the, the travel agencies or travel agents a, a really good proposal so they can come to the country and, and understand and leave and come back with Colombia in their heads. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Guillermo. Well, this is all from today's webinar. I will give you the last few minutes for you, but on my on my uh, side, thank you everyone for your time, for your interest in learning more about Colombia and getting uh, a better knowledge of Colombian Journeys DNC and what they can do for you and your clients. Uh, remember that I will be sending you a follow-up email early next week, so please be patient. I'm processing everything, uh, but that follow-up email will include this recording and um, digital materials and digital brochures and sample itineraries that Guillermo will be sharing with me. And I will make sure also to include Guillermo uh, and his team contact information. So anything you need, you can either send an email to me and I will make the introduction or otherwise, please feel free to contact uh, him directly. Uh, so thank you so, so much for your time today and over to you, Guillermo. Well, thank you very much for, for, for hearing us today. I'm very happy for all the questions you had. I hope I, I, I could uh, um, answer it all uh, and with the information you needed. So we are here in Colombia to receive you anytime. Colombia is a beautiful country. It's growing very fast. There is more and more destination every year. Uh, so, well, we are ready to, to, to receive you here. Take care. Have a great week. And, and looking forward to seeing you all in Colombia soon and with your clients. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers.